Hi, Susie. Hi, Wendy. How, How are you? I'm good. And you? I'm good. I'm so excited to have you here today. I'm happy to finally <laughs> be here. <laughs> Better late than never. So true. But I'm really happy to have you here. You're really inspirational. Oh. And I have learned a lot from your journey just viewing you. So for my viewers, this is Susan Joker. She's a commercial real estate specialist with Palm Golding. And today we'd like to share, she'd like to share with us her story, how she began, how she has grown in the real estate field, specifically commercial real estate. Mm. And it can help us learn a thing or two that we can incorporate into our businesses. Hi viewers, <laughs> such a pleasure being here. <laughs> I hope we'll learn something new. We will, yes. because you have a lot to share. So when did you start real estate? When did you become an agent? So I've always been in sales. Yeah, I started marketing in school. Mm -hmm. And in 2016, I was selling generators. Wow. <laughs> <Believe it or not. laughs> wow, and spare interesting. Parts. Yes, and uh -huh. spare parts for generators. Uh -huh. But at that point, I wasn't feeling... You know, there's that feeling of being satisfied with your job. Of being, Fulfilled. Yes, and excited about it. So at that point, I felt like this isn't working for me. So I decided to just take a pause, sit at home and just decide what am I going to do. Funny enough, a friend of mine saw the advertisement for Palm Golding on Facebook. And she was like, I, Susie, I think you can do this. So me, I've never been one to say no to a challenge. I applied. We went, we were about 200 candidates and only two of us were picked. Myself. 200 candidates? Yes. What? Yes. Myself and another lady. Just two of us were picked. Wow. So it was such an honor coming into a community. We are like a family. Had you had of Pam Golding? No. Up to that point, you had not had of no, them. No, not at all. Concept. It was new concept. Mm. You know, you always think about real estate because you see it on the TV. Glamorous. They are glamorous. They wear all these high heels. <laughs> they look so cute. Uh -huh. <laughs> so as a lady, it's always that thing that you're like, mm, uh -huh. I'd like to try <laughs> and see if it what, works. Uh, if that's how it is. If that's how it is. Mm. So. When I joined, I was given the option of either joining the residential side because Pam Golding had been all residential for the eight years, for the seven years, sorry, that they were in the country by then. I didn't know that. Pam Golding has been in existence for 40 plus years. Mm. Yeah. Our founder, Pam, mm -hmm. started the company because she had lost her job mm -hmm. and... Um, she just wanted to bring in a little bit extra to the family and she found a neighbor who was selling. She was like, can I help you? Mm. And she was so, she's such a vibrant, happy, go lucky kind of woman. Mm -hmm. So the same, in, the same kind of characteristics just continued with all the, the brand. Other, yes. it's in, she infused that spirit into the brand. Actually, when you come to the office, you'll hear us talking about what is called the palm golding DNA. Which is? We, we can't put it in paper, we don't know. But when you meet someone, you will know whether they, they have the DNA ah. or not. <laughs> we are all made up of the same DNA. Wow. Yeah. Of happiness, happiness service, service, cheerfulness. Yes. And I love Pam Golding's branding. Thank you. The like branding is on point. Our boss tells us we are merchants of happiness. <laughs> <laughs> That's the great way to summarize yes, it, that you're merchants, merchants of, of happiness, happiness. Yes. and it shows, yes. it really shows. Thank you. So at that point you had quit your job I or had you quit. leave? I, what was I, your move? I was there in the air. Mm. I had told my boss, I'm not really sure whether we are coming back or we you're are not. Leave. I went on a sabbatical, ah, really, yeah. all right. okay. where I have left the company but in time, we are still talking, no bad, no ill intentions happening. Mm. So I could still go back if I had wanted to. Mm. So I joined Palm Golding in November. Uh, I was 2016? 2016, yes. I was given either the options of residential, which was already existing, or commercial, which was two months old. Wow. So I decided to get the commercial route. because. What made you feel like commercial 
would be better than residential. I'd love to know the thinking behind that. For me, mm -hmm. I wanted something that is new because you formulate your own rules. Uh, you know, you create your own structure and you learn there's nothing as good as from the frying pot into the fire. When you're in the fire, you really, really learn. Uh, yeah. So I wanted something that will push me beyond my boundaries. Uh-huh. Yes. Because it was new. It, it was new. Uncharted. Yes, uncharted territory for the entire Pam Golden group. Wow. Yes. And so expectations were high. Expectations were not high, funny enough. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Like, let's see. Let's see. see. Us. <laughs> <laughs> the happens or no? Uh -huh. And then um, in 2017, we went ahead to sell our first half an acre property. Mm -hmm. So from there, we just grew. Wow. So how you got into real estate was your friend sent you an application yes. on Facebook yes. and you decided to try. Yes. And you didn't have a lot of background I on had, what it entailed. I had no... That's very courageous. No background whatsoever. Mm. But it also helps that uh, Palm Golding has an academy. We have a school. Ah. So you're trained on everything. Okay. Before yes. you start working before or during you, you... Before you start working, you have a two-week training period. A two-week training. Yes. Okay. And then... Physical you, or online? Physical. But physical. now I would assume it would go online. Mm. I'm not too sure. Mm -hmm. But the, back then it was physical two weeks and then you mentor with another agent who mm -hmm. has been performing what we call our gold club agents. Mm -hmm. So you mentor under them, then you hit the streets. Ah. Yes. And when you joined Pam Golding, mm -hmm. did you immediately join with your two partners or they joined along the way? They joined along the way. They joined along the way. So for my partner, Jones Muli, he joined in February. 2017. 2017. You influenced him? No, I met him as a sub agent, funny enough. Wow. And <laughs> I liked how he worked. I liked his integrity. You met no, 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 no. Oh, we, were, okay. we knew each other before that. Okay. But when we were doing the Palm Golding aspect, mm. it was more of him having a buyer and I had the property. So I, we put ourselves together. Oh. And then when we went to Palm Golding, I had been trying to pitch him to the company for like two months. Come on, come join us. You already have the buyers. We have the landlords. We have the sellers. Come join us. Then uh, he was like, no, let's just do this one deal. I like doing my businesses outside. Then after that, when we went to the office the first time, first time we went to the office, he met my boss for five minutes. He joined the company. Were you in that meeting? Yes. What was he told? I that don't, was the... I don't know what was the, the clinch that yeah. you have to ask him when you invite him for the interview. Yeah. But I was like, what? Five minutes. Five minutes. And I've been trying it for months. <laughs> I'd love to know. But he got a real sense of the brand. I, I think he imagine. got a real sense of the brand. Mm -hmm. I think when, when, you, when you think about work and then you think about your colleagues as your friends as your family yeah it's not something that is very commonly practiced in our culture my md is my very close friend literally literally wow yes and i'm sure you've learned a lot from him quite a lot like with our md you just pick up the phone hi kunal i need this and this and i'm stuck and he'll figure it out and he'll make it happen for you. Mm. They want you to... And that's to throughout, from 2017 up to today? Throughout, from the day I met him. What has he taught you about leadership, working with him? What are some lessons you've learned about leadership? Don't put a barrier between yourself and the people you work with. You are one. If you have that openness of conversation where someone can approach you at any one given time, to discuss either business or personal matters, then your brand grows. Two, to always make sure your employees are happy. Trust me, you want to go to work. You never know what is waiting for you. You want to meet your targets because there's something good waiting for you at the end of the day. Creating a nice and working Creating a nice, like pre-COVID, Anyone who made their target, so we'll sit at the beginning of the year and say, I am going to meet X target. 
So pre-COVID, anyone who met that target would be taken to a special place. Like last time they went to Swahili Beach. Wow. And it was three days fully funded, all, everything paid for. Mm -hmm. You just have fun mm -hmm. and relax. So that has continued giving us motivation. Quarterly, anyone who's made their quarterly target, you'll go for a lunch and some drinks and just have fun. Mm. So that it's a fun environment. It's a working. fun environment. When it's your birthday, they'll do cake. They'll send you a gift card. Mm -hmm. So it's always you always feel appreciated. Wow. Yes. So leaders should find ways to make their uh, people feel appreciated. Yes. That feeling of you know me, you know what I'm struggling with, and you care about it. Just that feeling is so important. It makes a difference. It makes a huge difference. You want to work for this person. And I feel like, personally, I feel like a CEO because I, wow. I believe... Wow, empowered you. Yes, I'm part of Palm Golding. So I am a CEO wow. of my area of commercial. Mm, yes. I love that spirit. Mm. I love that spirit. And so... Based on that incentive, mm -hmm. I'd also like us to share, you'd, I'd like you to share with us also mm -hmm. uh, that you were recently, I think twice in a row, you got the Palm Golding Club agent accolade. So, uh, Congratulations, <laughs> first of you. all, to you thank and your you. two partners. Thank you. I got it for the year 2019-2020. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, last year we were not be able to make it. Mm -hmm. Missed by the tiniest margin mm. but hey covid is covered life <laughs> life is life mm. but so in what does palm golding entail? in palm golding we mm. have four levels mm -hmm. okay so there are your personal targets when you meet your personal targets palm golding the company in terms which of are kenya for yourself or which you, you set for yourself for you. no you set, you for, set yourself. for yourself all right you sit down with your boss and you say this is what i believe i can be able to bring by the end of the year so they look at the figures, we see if you're under scoring yourself or you're over scoring yourself, and then we come to a middle ground. Once we do that, then you sign a document saying, this is my target for this year. You sign? Yes. I like that. <laughs> Guys, sign a document <laughs> committing always, to your always, target. Always, and this is uh, advice I give anyone, whether you're in the real estate world mm -hmm. or you're in any other uh, kind of business. Yeah. Always make sure what is important to you mm -hmm. is put on paper, mm. and you sign. Verbal contracts. I like the are, signing part. Yes, verbal contracts are very difficult to go after, so you always want to make sure it's on paper. Mm. Mm. So you set a target, discuss it with your team, mm -hmm. and then put it on paper and put it sign. And sign. <laughs> so once you make that target, then uh, Palm Gold in Kenya will give you either a trip, a gift. We'll do so they'll do something. It's always different every year. You never know what it is until ah. you meet your target. So, so it's a reward it's for a, hitting the target you committed you to. You committed to. That's amazing. Yes. That's amazing. Then Palm Golding as a group, because mm. we have about 300 offices across the world. So as a group, we have what is called Gold Club. So Gold Club is, there's a particular target that you have to meet. It's universal. Like last year, they were about, we were about what? 16 uh, we were top 16 out of 2000 agents making it to gold club so it's a really big deal to make it there mm -hmm. um our company last in 2019 2020 mm -hmm. had about 10 agents this year 2020 2021 we've had the highest number of agents making it to gold club i'm actually really proud of them wow yeah so making it gold club before COVID, again, we used to travel to South Africa, have a huge gala, these awards, these trophies. Mm. It was really How was magical. That experience? Oh my God, I went once. Uh -huh. uh, when you walk in, it's a red carpet. Walk wow. in, and then you have jazz. This is like the Grammy. Uh, you have jazz players playing for you, just serenading you. You're by yourself. There's a camera at the end. There's a cameraman at the end of the long aisle. 
So you walk down the aisle and then you're given your first glass of champagne. Wow. And then there's a whole sitting arrangement. True celebration. True celebration. Wow. And telling you that you've done a good job. You uh, deserve you, to be. You deserve. And then there's nothing as beautiful as interacting with multiple agents from so many different areas and just getting to understand what they go through, how they made it to Google Club. You pick up so many small, small, you learn from each random other. things that mm. you come and implement in your own market. Uh -huh. mm. Wow, that's amazing. Then beyond that, there is mm. what is called Gold Club Nationals. So those ones, like last time, they were taken to Montenegro. Wow. I tell you, my darling. <laughs> wow. I've never been Nationals, but it's You're part of my there. goal. I'm on my way there. Mm -hmm. Then they are our exclusive club, which is Emerald Circle. In Palm Gold in Kenya, we have two Emerald Circle agents. That is uh, Sansi and Nili. And Nili covers where? Nili covers uh, Modaika. Okay, they yes. work together. They, they, they used to work together, but the area became too big. So oh. now they've each taken a separate area, mm -hmm. but they still co-work together quite a lot. Uh. So they're Emerald agents. Wow. So I love that they're constantly giving you something new to aspire to. Always. So that it keeps you on your toes. Once you've achieved something, you don't rest on your There's toes. always something to achieve. And as a team, as a group, Pam Golding, there's always someone rallying for you. That's so beautiful. I yes. wish more companies did that, Susan. So true. So true. The support. Yes. Support alone goes such a long way. And it comes all the way from the top, from the Pam Golding Global Group. From the MD sitting there, who's Andrew Golding, all the way to the bottom to our cleaners. Everyone wow. has the same feeling. Wow. Yes. It's very intentional. Very intentional. Mm. Very, very intentional. Yes. I love that spirit. Mm. Mm. So, what are the skills you've had to build to be able to be such a successful commercial real estate agent? Because commercial real estate uh, demands more of an agent. One, because the amount is higher, the amount the client is spending is higher. Two, you're dealing with very smart investors. You know, yes. they know their stuff. Mm. How do you navigate that and what are the skills you've grown to be a really good commercial real estate agent? So, I wouldn't say that there's anything like particular, but I'll tell you a few things that have helped me get there along the way. Mm -hmm. So one, I have had, I, I learned to be completely honest all the time. Mm. What do you mean by honest? What I mean is, you know, mm. selling and buying is a very emotional process. Regardless of whether it's for your business, because if it's for your business, you're thinking this is where I'll be for the next 10 to 15 years. I want my some, hard money. my hard earned money. I want somewhere where everything will be okay. And then on the other side, you have the seller who's thinking, I bought this property, I need to make some form of uh, profit from it so that I can buy the next property. So interacting with the two, you always want to make them happy. And as an agent, it's very easy to find yourself in a situation where you're telling your buyer, yes, I'll make this happen. Uh... And you know on the other side, it won't happen. Or telling your seller, yes, the price you want, I will get it for you. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it's not what the market is asking for. So we have learned, I have personally learned to just tell you the honest truth. Even if it's bad news. Even if it's bad news, I'm sorry. But what you're expecting... It's not reasonable it's right now. It's not, it's, not it's not what the achievable. market is asking for. Mm -hmm. So we always have to go with what the market is asking for. And I will always have my data. Having data and information and making sure you always know what's going on in your market is very important. Where do you get that from? You as Susan. Put, put your ear on the ground. Uh, have people like research. Wendy do your research. I, I make friends with other agents. What are you doing on your end? Mm. How, how is business going from my own personal transactions? So I can be able to gauge in this particular area, half an acre are going for roughly X mm. amount. And I'll actually give you statistics of this is what has sold, 
this is what has listed it has listed in this amount of time mm -hmm. so we'll be able to walk that journey with you mm -hmm. Mm. okay honesty honesty research data having research. the facts at hand yes mm -hmm. never be afraid to say i don't know i will do my research and come back to you uh -huh. never be afraid to say that there's nothing wrong with it i feel like um as agents sometimes you find yourself in that situation where you feel like you need to answer right right now you don't have you to. don't have to you and don't. the clients will understand they will like, it's not a fire come on <laughs> <laughs> we have time yes and buying buying property is not bought in one day it's a process it's a process so asking for a day or two to find your facts and make sure you have them right is okay and it's valuable and it's valuable then you make an informed decision yes yes mm. three I learned the value of keeping time and communicating. So always communicate with your people. Never assume that someone knows something, even if you believe that they should know it. That aspect of communication and actually sitting down and listening to what your buyer is saying or what your seller is saying. Sit, be a good listener. Be a good listener. Sit down and really, really deep, dig deep. How do you do that? I sit down with my clients. For example, if it's a buyer, mm. I'll sit down with you. I want to know why are you moving? When you in your previous space, what did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? What are you looking for now? What is that one thing that will just make you say, yes, that's the office for me? How many square feet are you looking for? I always find that most clients don't really know Size. how many square feet they're looking for mm -hmm. so it's always very important to know the size you're looking for and do your research like for example just find out the office i'm in right now how many square feet am i occupying will i need to expand do i look am i looking at expanding my employees or am i looking at downsizing mm -hmm. are we looking at working from home more mm -hmm. and having more flexibility or are we looking at working from the office like now that there's a pandemic, if you're looking at fully working from the office, you have to consider that you'll take a bigger space because, because of social, social distancing. distancing. So there's quite a lot to be considered at that point. So before you take your client to a viewing, sit down with them. Understand what is it that you're looking for? What is your budget? When a client tells you, I don't have a budget, okay. that is untrue. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Mm. Even when you're going to buy your favorite ice cream, there is a price you're not willing to cross. Correct? Or when you're going to take your kids out for a fun day, mm. there's always something that you're not willing to cross. Mm -hmm. So sit down with your client and ask, okay, my bu your budget is open, yes, but what's that figure that you're not willing to go beyond? So it's very important to just have that one-on-one -on -one and understand what's happening with the client, mm -hmm. their needs, why are they moving. Mm -hmm. With that, you'll be able to know exactly where to place them. And usually is one meeting enough or it's a continuous? So normally what I'll do is mm -hmm. we'll have one meeting, then I'll share three very different options. After the initial After meeting. After the initial meeting. We can have the initial meeting on phone, of, but I always prefer face-to-face. -face. Now there's a pandemic, I've taken advantage of Zoom just to have that face-to-face -face and I can read your body language. Uh, reading the body language is key. Is very key, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So after that, I'll share three very different options and you'll find most of the time the client will want to see the three. When you go see the By three, different options, you mean in terms of budget or in terms no, of... No, not in terms of budget, in, in terms, terms of, of feel. In terms of feel. Okay. For example, let's say you're looking for 2,000 square feet to buy and your budget is 25 million. Mm. Okay. Mm. So, like right now as we're seated, I have a duplex. It's on the 13th floor, very gorgeous, very stunning. Or I have something that is on the ground floor. Mm. On a main road that is noisy, mm. yes, but it's right there, right next to, tra oh, to traffic. Accessible. Accessible. Mm. Then I have something that is very enclosed, very 
if you if you don't want everyone to know where you're working uh, so i'll show you those three so different features different sort of. features mm. sort of so that i can get a feel of what's important to you okay. and then from there if you don't like the one that gave you the best feels i'll give you two or three more options that will help you mm -hmm. wow okay mm -hmm. uh-huh so you start with an initial meeting yes. establish needs understand your clients needs mm -hmm. and then give them a variety to sort of test what would work for them yes and then what after that after you've given them a variety to see what works for them you'll find more than likely if your client is serious he'll take that first option that worked for them Mm -hmm. But if they don't take that first option, mm -hmm. now you look for two or three more options that now align completely with what they like the first time. And usually you find between those four properties, the client will always pick one. Mm -hmm. So everything comes back to understanding your client's needs. Yes, yes. Because then all the options you'll give them will tie back to the needs. To the needs. Mm -hmm. And if you fulfill the needs you've met everything you've met everything. that's why uh, real estate is a very human kind of thing we have to understand each other you have to know even even beyond your client what they want what is their character are they happy go lucky or are they very quiet serene you know are they extroverts are they introverts that will still help you take them forward towards the property they need oh really yes and how do you gauge that you ask, what, you do ask. You, what do you do for fun? <laughs> oh, Where wow. do you go? Uh -huh. How many kids do you have? Oh. Are you, do you have a family? Do they go to school? And let your client talk to you. Talk know them you a little them. bit? Yes. That's such good you, advice. You want your client, you want, you want to know your client personally. Make them your friend. And that's such good advice coming from a commercial real estate agent because i would imagine I commercial is all you're seated in the boardroom everyone is like that's what hey, let's get to <laughs> that's what everyone assumes let's get to business yes. Susie. everyone always assumes it's it's an excel sheet these are the yes. figures this is what i want and i don't have time and for all of this it goes beyond that wow. yes it's important to always make sure you're keeping within the math within the budget that they're willing to spend that's why you sit down at the beginning and talk but a property is beyond that. Mm -hmm. There is someone who will be attracted with a property that is all green. But there is someone who wants that concrete jungle feel. Yeah. So knowing them deeper will help you get to the end goal. And in commercial, it's always very important to make sure that you're talking to the decision maker. Because there are always so many people before you get to the decision maker. Because most companies, when you're searching, you'll either search through your HR or through your procurement department. But these two are not the true decision makers. Yes, they will influence the decision, but you'll often find the decision maker will be the CEO at the end of the day. So you want to get to that level to understand what that CEO, he or she needs. Mm, okay, so... Dealing with the decision maker is very important. Very key. So that you don't waste a lot of time uh, in the process. Yes, because what the person who's searching believes is 100% for them might not be what the decision maker believes is 100% for them. So Could you'll end opposites. up. Yes. <laughs> so you'll end up spending time to show this person mm -hmm. and then spending time to show this other person. When you could have just shown the two. Wow, okay. And there's nothing wrong with asking your client kindly when you're coming for the viewing, come with all the decision makers.